they can make all the difference in our lives today because we believe in miracles. And we believe that God wants to work miracles today. In 1986, during a drought in Israel, the waters on the shore of the Sea of Galilee receded and some locals were walking by and they spotted the remains of a wooden fishing boat buried in the mud. And they dug it out. Archaeologists dated it back 2,000 years ago to the time when Christ walked the shores of the Sea of Galilee. It's now called the Jesus Boat. It's in a museum in Israel. And Chris and I have had the privilege of seeing it a couple of times. Here's a picture of the remains of this ancient fishing boat. And, and what makes this boat so special is that it was just like the boat, or there's a slight chance that it was the boat that Jesus and his disciples were in when Christ performed miracles like calming the sea. And what's amazing is our creative team, so creative, that they reconstructed the boat. It's pretty amazing. They reconstructed the Jesus boat to what it looked like 2,000 years ago when it was brand new. In fact, it's the same dimensions, 27 feet, 7.5 feet wide, 27 feet long, made of cedar planks, flat on the bottom so to get into the shallows and fish there in the Sea of Galilee. And so this is the exact dimensions and the way the boat looked that Jesus and his disciples would be in on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. There's been a lot of talk about miracles over the last several months and really last couple of years in secular culture. In fact, 78% of Americans say they believe in miracles. But what are miracles? And what constitutes a miracle? How do you receive a miracle? Who gives miracles? Who gets miracles? And all these things about miracles are going around. So Chris and I really felt the Lord leading us to write a book about it because we thought we need to go back to Jesus' miracles to really have a balanced view of what miracles are. We've got to look at the miracles of Christ. And as we studied the miracles of Christ, we realized they can make all the difference in our lives today because we believe in miracles. You know, we believe that God wants to work miracles today. And we want to sort of put you on the boat. We want to all get in the boat over the next several weeks with the disciples and with everyone who encountered Christ. Because we think it's important to put ourselves in the shoes of those who experienced a miracle from Christ. Like the fishermen, like the wedding guests, like the sick and the paralyzed like the thousands on a hillside that were suddenly supplied with food. Because all those who experienced a miracle of Christ had to come face to face with some life-changing questions. Questions like, who is this Jesus? Is this really a miracle? Could Jesus be God? And if he is God, does that mean that God cares about every detail of my life? that God wants to meet every need of my life. So I want you to open your Bibles to Matthew 11, beginning with verse 4. And would you stand in honor of God's word, Wilden Church. And I want to welcome all you guys worshiping with us at our satellite campuses, everyone worshiping with us through our broadcast and online ministry around the world, and all of you here in the Woodlands, we're built on God's word. So just look at the words of Christ. Jesus told them, Go back and tell John what's going on. The blind see, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear and the dead are raised. The wretched of the earth learn that God is on their side. Is this what you were expecting? Then count yourselves most blessed. You can be seated. I want you to see that Jesus told John's followers, hey, tell John, look at the miracles I'm doing because those miracles point to who I am, that I am who I say I am, that I'm God. And then Jesus basically tells us, if you're wondering if God cares about you, if you're wondering 
Does God want to be involved in your life? Then look at the miracles I do because I want to work those miracles in your life. Hudson Taylor said there are three stages to every great work of God. First, it is impossible. Then it's difficult. And then it's done. And so we're going to look at these three stages. We're going to see the start of a miracle. We're going to look at the storm that comes into every miracle and pushes us toward a miracle. And we're going to look at the source of miracles as we get started on this journey. Really, we're going to look at three miracles today that get us started on our journey. And the start of a miracle starts with Jesus' first miracle. The very first miracle that Jesus performed, which was at the wedding in Cana, where he turned the water into wine. And that's why we have these pots up here to represent that. So look with me, if you will, in John 2, beginning with verse 1. This is the first miracle of Christ. The next day there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' mother told him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, that's not our problem, Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Standing nearby were six stone water jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. And Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water. When the jars had been filled, he said, now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. And when the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though of course the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over. A host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you have kept the best until now. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. So Jesus, the scripture says, was invited to this wedding celebration in Cana. Now, the bride and groom were probably dear friends or even related to Jesus' mother, Mary, because Mary was there behind the scenes. She was one of the few that saw that they'd run out of wine. And so this couple, for whatever reason, invited Jesus to the wedding. That's the smartest thing this couple ever did. They invited Jesus Christ to their wedding. You want to do that. I mean, think about it. He just, his miracle saved them from getting off to a terrible start in their marriage. Because a wedding celebration in Jewish culture at that time would last for several days. And it was the important occasion in all the town. And so it was unforgivable if you ran out of food or wine. And Jesus saved them the terrible embarrassment that would have gotten their marriage off to a terrible start. Well, to explore this miracle, we need to go back to Christ's day to see that every Jewish home had these pots where they kept water for ceremonial washing. Now it says that they had six pots in this home that was hosting the wedding. But every home would have had these pots that were filled with water for the ceremonial washing, which was just a ritual to remind them of God washing away their sins. And these pots, it says, were 20 to 30 gallons each. They held that much water. And this water was really undrinkable because it was used for the ceremonial washing And that was one of the reasons why the the, the wine was so important too because they didn't get sick from the wine. That fermentation would kill all the germs with the water. Many times the water would bring about disease. And uh, this water for ceremonial washing would fall back into the pots and they use it. And you just wouldn't drink that. No one would, it was undrinkable. So think about it. Get the picture. Jesus takes 180 gallons of undrinkable water and turns it into 180 gallons of the best wine ever made. A reservoir of wine. Pretty amazing. But my question is, why? I mean, why did Jesus work this miracle? Why did he perform this miracle? The first miracle that Christ performed is really to me the most puzzling miracle that he performed. Because all the miracles that he would do following this miracle always seemed to be meeting the need of some 
desperate person who is sick or dying or meeting this huge need of someone who is in a desperate situation at the end of the rope. But running out of wine at a wedding? That doesn't seem like it's very important to me. I mean, is that something worth using miracle power for to meet that need? Why did he do that? Well, we need to go back to understand that when they would do this ceremonial washing, they were doing it because God had commanded them to. It was to remind them of their sinfulness and they were unclean before a holy and perfect God. But then the religious leaders came along and they added a lot more ceremonial washings to the Jewish law. And so you had to do all these different ceremonial washings. They added all these other rituals to it. You know, it's like, you know, I, I got to do this thing, you know, constantly, the ceremonial washing. I don't know why. It's so boring. It's burdensome. We got to stop what we're doing to do this. And, but if I don't, I'll feel guilty, you know, because I guess I'm supposed to do this. And so that's what they were doing. And I think one of the reasons Christ performed this miracle is to show that he can take something boring and burdensome and turn it into something amazing. He can take a life that is really stuck in a rut and burdensome and he can turn it into a life filled with joy and purpose. I see him do that all the time. His greatest miracle is a changed life. I've seen him do his greatest miracle in my life, a changed life. And so it shows me that. But it also shows me that Jesus is the true vine. He said that later, the disciples, I'm the true vine and you're the branch. And so you find true fulfillment, the best wine that brings fulfillment in your life when you're connected to me. I'm the only source of real fulfillment and meaning and purpose and joy. But then I think also he did this miracle for a very important reason to show us that he cares about every detail of our lives. If we care about it, he cares about it. And that brings me to what I want you to remember if you don't remember anything else. It's there in your notes, fill in the blank. Jesus always starts with the miracle you need most. When Jesus wants to work a miracle in your life, he always starts with the miracle that you need most. So what's the miracle that you need most that rises to the top of your heart and your mind? The burden you're carrying, the miracle you need most. Jesus is God, so he had to have known that they would be sailing into a storm. He knew all about the storm, and that's really comforting to me when storms come into my life, to know that even if I'm surprised, God isn't. Experience the blessing of the greatest gift Christmas has to offer. Today, as a thank you for your gift of $20 or more to the ministry, we would like to send you Pastor Carrie's latest seven-message DVD series, Find Your Miracle, How the Miracles of Jesus Can Change Your Life Today. Because Christ never performed a miracle without a purpose. He shows us that He still wants to work miracles in our lives today. He wants us to experience miracles in the most important areas of our lives. This new Breakthrough Message series explores the miracles of Jesus, revealing how each encounter is a miracle map that can lead you to greater revelation and restoration in your own life. Your faith will be stretched further so that God will be exalted higher. And in appreciation of your giving, we will also include a 2017 weekly planner designed to help you set God-sized goals and approach each day expecting Him to do great things in the new year. To request your copy of Find Your Miracle DVD series or to give the series and planner as a gift to someone you love, call us toll free at 844-34-CARRY or visit carryshook.org today. Remember when Jesus met Bartimaeus in Jericho, the blind beggar, and he called Bartimaeus to him. And, and here's what happened. I, I think this is so important to understand in Mark 10, 51. Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. And the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. So Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? Now, he was blind. Jesus knew that. And Bartimaeus, though, had a lot of needs. I mean, he could have pulled out this long list. You know, he, he could have said, well, I don't have any money. I need money. He could have said, you know, I'm homeless. I need a place to live. 
He, he could have said, I don't have any friends. I need some friends. But Jesus says, what is it you want me to do for you? What's the miracle you need most? And right away he said, I want to see. And Jesus healed him so that he could see. He always starts with the miracle you need most. But then I, I want you to see this second thing. There's a storm that comes into every miracle. And many times the storm is where God works his greatest miracles. And to look at this, I've invited my best friend, the love of my life, Chris, to help me with this. And we're going to get into the boat together and hope this boat holds us. I would put it out there in the ponds. I'm not sure that it would really float. But we're going to get in the boat together because Chris and I are in the same boat Come on up in our marriage way. relationship. We're in the same boat and we've been through storms together. We've been through sunny seas together, but we're in the same boat. That's right. We're in the same boat. And I love um, what Jesus taught about storms because um, if you are married, then you know that a lot of miracles and also a lot of storms uh, are come in that arena and come into marriage. And um, it's something that applies to all of our lives, how Jesus is there in the storm with us. Look at Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So Jesus told his disciples, hey, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. Now, Jesus is God. So he had to have known that they would be sailing into a storm. He knew all about the storm. And that's really comforting to me when storms come into my life, to know that even if I'm surprised, God isn't. That he already knew about it. He's already ahead of me. He's even in the storm and ready to calm the waves and quiet the wind. You see, storms are part of his plan. Um, and I think it's because they help me learn to trust him. I, mean, I don't know about you, but that's what drives me. Oh, Usually no to trust God more is the storms that come into my life. That brings us to our next point, which is the miracle you need most leads you to what you really need most, a deeper relationship with Christ. You see, that's what all of us really need. Look again at Mark um, in verse 38, chapter 4. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? You see, they were saying, God, Jesus, don't you care about me? Do you care about me? And that's really the question that we're always asking too. When storms come into our lives, we're saying, Jesus, do you care? Do you know what's going on here? And do you care if I go under? I feel like I'm sinking. Do you know? Do you care? And so it may be in a job situation, a health situation, or a relationship. Whatever area of your life that you're experiencing storms in right now, just know that uh, Jesus wants to calm the wind and the waves. He wants to take care of you in the boat. But first we have to recognize that he's there. And um, I know that in general it takes a big storm to get my attention. You know, the everyday stuff, I kind of feel like, okay, God, I got this one. I can handle this. Go on and help somebody really in need. Whereas the truth is, I need him every day for every single breath. I blow it. I make a mess of things. Um, immediately, if I don't have God's guidance, if I'm not leaning on him and looking to him. Just in all the little things. And I've really come to believe that instead of thinking that miracles are rare, just giant things that rarely happen, I think they're a lot more common. As a matter of fact, that there are miracles surrounding us every day. Everyday miracles, um, it's just that I don't notice and I don't appreciate them. I think that God, uh, for each one of us every day, 
so many times does little things to get our attention. That's what miracles are after all. I think it's just God intervening in time and space to spread time and space apart and remind us of how much he cares for us, how much he loves us, and that he wants to teach us something as well at the same time. And I think of the, the thousands of things that God does for me, the things he surrounds me with every day, little things, little miracles, and he intentionally provides little miracles, true miracles, for us every day. And so often we miss them. But the fact that we don't acknowledge those little miracles or thank him for them makes them no less miraculous. They're just as much miracles. You know, when he puts that, um, you know, that flower that you really like and happens to be, you get to, to see as you walk past, or um, maybe a friend calls and says the very words, or maybe even a stranger, those words that you needed to hear. When he creates in time and space those little love notes to remind you that he cares, that he loves you, things that maybe only you would recognize. And those are the little miracles that surround us every day. And so Carrie and I are trying to get closer to uh, that point where we don't have to wait for the giant things to turn us back to God, to the miracles. And the, the big storms will always drive us to our knees. But more quickly, recognizing every day the miracles, those love notes from God saying, I care, you, I care about you, I love you, and I want to teach you. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at Mark 439 because we see the miracle right here. Jesus stood up and commanded the wind, be quiet. And he said to the waves, be still. The wind died down and there was a great calm. Then Jesus said to his disciples, why are you frightened? Do you still have no faith? But they were terribly afraid, began to say to one another, who is this man? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So Jesus calms the storm and did that take away their fear? No, it just redirected their fear from the storm. Now they're fearing Jesus. They're wondering, could he be God? You see, Christ is drawing them closer to himself. They're understanding he's the only one that can deliver them from storms. And if you never had a storm, you'd never pray. You'd never seek God. You would never find ultimate fulfillment and have needs met that only God can meet. And that's one of our problems sometimes. We try to meet each other's deepest needs and we look to each other, save me from my stresses, meet my deepest needs and puts too much pressure on a human being. But when we look to God, when Christ is in our boat, then we look to him together and he draws us close together. And I can say this, after 32 years of sunny skies and storms and all kinds of weather in our marriage, um, because we're looking to Christ and he's in our boat and we're learning how to look to him first. But I want you to see a third thing. See, it's important to remember that Jesus starts with the miracle you need most, but then he gets you to what you really need most, a deeper relationship with him. But let's look at the third thing, the source of the miracle. And here's a real interesting miracle in Matthew 21, 18. It says, in the morning, as Jesus was returning to Jerusalem, he was hungry and he noticed a fig tree beside the road. He went over to see if there were any figs, but there were only leaves. Then he said to it, may you never bear fruit again. And immediately the fig tree withered up. The disciples were amazed when they saw this and asked, how did the fig tree wither so quickly? Then Jesus told them, I tell you the truth, if you have faith and don't doubt, you can do things like this and much more. You can even say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. You can pray for anything and if you have faith, you will receive it. I think this miracle is really unusual. It stands out yeah. to me because it's not uh, the usual like blessing. Yeah. Usually when there's a miracle, you see that uh, things are all changed for the good. But in the case of the tree in this yeah. one, uh, the tree was, you know, cursed and no longer bore fruit at all and withered and died um, because it was lack of fruit, because there was nothing good there. And so uh, it just makes me think of how God can use his power to teach me in any situation. You know, this fig tree had leaves and so it looked like it was going to have fruit because fig trees grow leaves and fruit at the same time. So if you see a tree with leaves, then you know there should be fruit on it. But there wasn't any. It was something that looked good on the outside, but then when you got close, you realized there was nothing useful there. 
And Paul in Galatians tells us that the fruit of the Spirit, what we should be producing in our lives is joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, self-control. He tells us about all these great qualities that should be in our lives if we're spending time with Christ. We hope that you really enjoyed the message today and that you allow it to impact your life. And we really do want to hear from you. And so if you'll call us right now, you know, we want to get this series to you because when you put God's Word into your life, it changes everything. And you may think of a neighbor, a friend, a relative, a family member who could really use this message. You know, the Bible is written not to increase our knowledge, but to change our lives. You put God's Word into your life and it changes everything. So call us right now so we can get this series to you. And you may know someone you need to get the series to, to be a blessing in their life. We're so grateful that you're tuning in and joining us at Carrie Shook Ministries. And we're just so grateful to be a part of your life. Experience the blessing of the greatest gift Christmas has to offer. Today, as a thank you for your gift of $20 or more to the ministry, we would like to send you Pastor Carrie's latest seven message DVD series, Find Your Miracle. How the miracles of Jesus can change your life today. Because Christ never performed a miracle without a purpose. He shows us that He still wants to work miracles in our lives today. He wants us to experience miracles in the most important areas of our lives. This new Breakthrough Message series explores the miracles of Jesus, revealing how each encounter is a miracle map that can lead you to greater revelation and restoration in your own life. Your faith will be stretched further so that God will be exalted higher. And in appreciation of your giving, we will also include a 2017 weekly planner designed to help you set God-sized goals and approach each day expecting Him to do great things in the new year. To request your copy of Find Your Miracle DVD series or to give the series and planner as a gift to someone you love, call us toll free at 844-34-CARRY or visit carryshook.org today. Thank you for joining us today and being a part of the Carrie Shook Ministries.